Hey all, welcome to Share Trek. This is Raj here. And friends, uh, if you, if you recall, uh, recollect, I think a couple of days ago, uh, I, I, I made a video on Pfizer and their hemophilia B uh, gene therapy. And one of the reasons why I did that was because most of our um, genomic watch list companies do not have much news other than CRISPR and Bluebird, and I already covered everything about Bluebird and CRISPR as it pertains to exacel as well as uh, lower cell. And I even, for good measure, covered the CTX110 and 130 and all those things. So uh, uh, the idea was to expand to big pharma also, which is also getting into gene therapy. Today, I'm going to talk to you about Biomarin's gene therapy product called as Roctavian, which is for hemophilia A. So let's get started. <music> Welcome back, friends. Uh, on Friday, uh, I think on Thursday, that is yesterday, uh, the, uh, the FDA uh, gave an approval to uh, Biomarin's gene therapy product called Roctavian. Uh, and it has sparked both excitement and debate within the medical community. While Biomarin has emphasized uh, that its clinical outcomes and potential benefits uh, are good, the FDA label presents a more modest picture. The, uh, this essay uh, com explores the significance of Roctavian's approval, its limitations, and the broader context of the emerging field of gene therapy. Before I proceed to talk about Roctavian, I need to describe current treatment options so that you can understand the potential of Roctavian, and you can make a judgment for yourself whether this is a big deal or not. The current treatment options for hemophilia A, which is a genetic disorder characterized by a deficiency of clotting factor 8, uh, including, uh, which includes the following. The first uh, uh, therapy approach is replacement therapy. The primary treatment for hemophilia A involves replacing the missing or deficient factor 8 clotting protein. Uh, this can be done through intravenous infusion of factor 8 concentrates derived from human plasma or through recombinant factor uh, 8 products which are produced through genetic engineering techniques. The second method is prophylactic treatment. Prophylactic treatment involves regular infusions of factor 8 to maintain a sufficient level of clotting factor in the blood, thereby preventing bleeding episodes. This approach aims to prevent joint damage and other complications associ associated with hemophilia A. But friends, as you would have guessed, because this is prophylactic and it is done proactively, uh, this is going to be a more expensive uh, option for the patients. However, it has got its own positive benefits. And then the other approach we have is on-demand treatment. And on-demand treatment involves administering factor VIII infusions as needed to control bleeding episodes. This approach is typically used for individuals with mild to moderate hemophilia A or in situation where prophylactic treatment is not feasible or preferred. Then finally, we have the uh, hemostatic agents in addition to replacement of, uh, in, in addition to the uh, use of replacement therapy. Uh, hemostatic agents such as uh, desmopressin, which is also called as DDAVP, which is a short form may be used in certain cases. DDAVP can stimulate the release of stored factor VIII in individuals with mild hemophilia A or those with sp specific subtypes of the condition. It's important to note that the treatment plans are, uh, are tailored to each individual's specific needs and can vary based on the severity of the condition, the presence of inhibitors, that is antibodies uh, that neutralize factor VIII and other factors. Treatment uh, decisions are typically made in consultation with a hematologist or a specializing a specialized uh, healthcare team uh, experienced in managing hemophilia A. So friends, when you look at all these complications and how, uh, how personalized uh, the treatment options are, you would appreciate uh, the benefits that comes with Roctavian. Roctavian's clinical outcome and market potential can be described as follows. Uh, according to the FDA label, Roctavian demonstrates a 52% decrease in the average number of bleeds, both treated and untreated over a three-year treatment period. This reduction from a baseline of 5.4 bleeds per year to 2.6 bleeds per year offers a promising outcome for patients with severe hemophilia A, and that is for sure. They will get at least 50% relief. However, it is important to note that the Roctavian's benefits are not lifelong or curative. Despite this limitation, Biomarin estimates that approximately 2,500 out of 6,500 severe hemophilia A patients in the United States 
are eligible for the therapy, thus highlighting its potential impact on the substantial portion of the uh, affected population. Again, the affected population is a very small number. If you look at just 6,500 across the entire US, and out of that, if you're looking at targeting only 2,500, so it's a very, very small market size. But Roctavian's longevity and uh, transformative potential uh, is something that we have to keep in mind. One of the concerns raised during FDA's previous rejection of Roctavian in 2020 was the long-run sustainability of the benefits. Phase three data from the third year of the study indicated a decrease in uh, average levels of factor eight activity per year, uh, year over year in patients. While uh, Roctavian may not provide a cure or a like lifelong benefit, it still represents a transformative treatment options for patient with severe hemophilia A. Biomarin's president of Worldwide R&D, uh, Henry Fuchs, uh, acknowledges that Roctavian may not work for everyone or provide uh, indefinite benefits. Nevertheless, he believes that it's uh, effective enough uh, treatment in a significant number of patients for a substantial period. Let's talk about the dawn of gene therapy. Roctavian's approval is a testament to the advancing field of gene therapy, which is rapidly transforming cutting edge science into practical solution and bringing it to the patient. In recent times, the FDA has granted approval for multiple gene therapy products, uh, underscoring the progress being made Noteworthy approvals include some of the companies in our watch list. Let us start off with one of the other companies that's not in our watch list, that is Crystal Biotech, which came up with a therapy for a severe skin condition. Then we have Sarepta Therapeutics treatment for a DMD, that is Duchenne muscular dystrophy, CSL Behringer's gene therapy for hemophilia B, and Bluebird Bio's uh, cell-based uh, cell gene therapy for beta thalassemia. Uh, these advancements signify a breakthrough for gene therapy with a potential for five gene therapy products approved for rare disorders within a single year. And this is the first time we are seeing such a phenomenon. And this is matching the total number of approvals seen in the past six years for gene therapy. Roctavian's regulatory journey and commercialization challenges are phenomenal. Roctavian's uh, development originated from University College London and St. Jude's Children Research Hospital with Biomarin obtaining the license rights uh, in 2013. Despite early promising clinical results, Roctavian faced hurdles in the regulatory process. The FDA's rejection in 2020 required additional phase three follow-up data, delaying the submission until late 2022. And they performed one of the biggest uh, gene therapy trial uh, that we have seen of late. Furthermore, Roctavian has encountered challenges in commercialization, particularly in Europe. And it's not a new story. Bluebird Bio could not commercialize Zinteglo and they, uh, they walked out of Europe. And uh, so same thing has happened to Roctavian also before. And the therapy has struggled to gain traction in the European market with Biomarin facing difficulties in initiating commercial treatment and setting up reimbursement arrangements. The complexities of existing healthcare systems and the unique nature of gene therapies pose obstacles to their adoption. And as, a, as the time goes by and more and more gene therapies come into play and they become more reliable and uh, widely accepted, I think this is going to improve. And now let us turn our concerns and attention to durability and stability. Uh, the durability of Roctavian's benefits and uh, safety implications remain areas of interest and scrutiny. Data presented at the International Society of Thrombosis and uh, Hemostasis meeting revealed this, uh, that some patients in the phase three study returned to using uh, prophylaxis treatment, raising questions about the long-term sustainability of Roctavian's effects. Additionally, elevated levels of the enzyme ALT uh, were observed in a significant number of patients treated with Roctavian. While the majority of these elevations were minor or moderate, not all patients saw a decrease in ALT levels over time. Approximately one in three patients reported high enzyme levels in the second year, and about 25% of treated patients still had elevated levels of ALT in the third year. The cause of elevated ALT level remains undefined, and long-term safety implications are yet to be fully understood. Biomarin's president of Worldwide R&D, Henry Fuchs, suggests that the artificial gene from, uh, from the therapy may be causing stress on liver cells, but the uh, hepatologists have deemed the liver function abnormalities clinically insignificant. Uh, but despite these challenges and uncertainties, there is considerable interest in Roctavian among physicians. An analysis conducted by SVB Securities found that a majority of hematology specialists uh, surveyed were impressed with the 
uh, efficacy and safety of roctavian they estimated that roctavian could capture 17% of the 17% of the severe hemophilia a market in its first year and potentially reach 24% uh, at its peak again this is a very small market size therefore the cost of the therapy is likely to quite uh, to be quite high uh, however the durability and safety concerns surrounding roctavian could make it a tough sell in the near future patients with severe hemophilia a have alternative treatment options available such as rosh uh, he- hemlibra and uh, sanofi has recently approved uh, uh, altuvito moreover rival gene therapy products are also in making progress pfizer and sangamo therapeutics are expecting pivotal results from their hemophilia a gene therapy in the first half of 2024 while rosh and sanofi have their own pivotal studies underway so there is going to be a lot of competition even for that small market it's good for the patients in my opinion given these uncertainties in the availability of alternative treatments and many more potential treatments uh, down the pipeline some doctors and patients may adopt a cautious approach and wait for the for more clinical programs to unfold before committing to a costly one time intervention like roctavian conclusion i would say is that the fda approval of roctavian represents a significant step forward in the field of gene therapy for severe hemophilia a patients while its clinical outcomes may be more modest than initially anticipated roctavian offers a transformative uh, treatment option for eligible patients uh, especially those with severe hemophilia a and the approval of roctavian alongside other gene therapy products underscores the progress and potential of this cutting edge field However, challenges related to market penetration, durability of benefits, and safety implication must be addressed to fully realize the benefits of gene therapy. Continued research, real-world evidence, and collaboration among stakeholders will be vital in unlocking the full potential of gene therapy. Despite the uncertainties, the emergence of gene therapy products like Roctavian signals a paradigm shift in healthcare. offering renewed hope for patients with rare disorders and friends as i uh, mentioned in the uh, two videos ago about uh, pfizer so all big pharma are also coming up with gene therapies so i think it's a good move on our part in the part of the channel uh, to start uh, looking at big pharma as well and focusing on their gene therapy sections because that way we would have a full comprehensive understanding of what is happening in the gene therapy field uh, please let me know what you think about my approach and my uh, my idea of including companies like pfizer and biomarin and potentially other companies which might be working on gene therapies which are very close to approval or are being approved or have just been approved so please put that in the comments below i'd be very uh, keen to understand how you look at this and uh, uh, that would help me shape the content creation for future with that my friends i'd like to bring this video to an end we are very very close to 4000 subscribers and i'm uh, hoping that if you have not yet subscribed you would subscribe because subscription is absolutely free it will take us to 4000 and as soon as we reach 4000 i'm going to unlock the membership options so that you can support your favorite channel for genomics and uh, we can have some special programming in the uh, uh, members only section with that i'd like to end this video here thanks and have a great day have a wonderful weekend and uh july 4th happens to be canada day uh, sorry uh, us uh, independence day and july 1st is canada day so 1st to 4th is going to be fabulous time for us i have to uh, go and attend a barbecue to celebrate canada day with some close friends so i'm looking forward to that and i hope you guys also have a great barbecue at your place or enjoy it the way that you do thanks and have a great day bye for now